friends in the previous video we have discussed the basics of drawing power now in this video we will coming up with one step ahead we will discuss one more or two more complexities in calculation of stock st uh, drawing power of the borrower so this is class 51 we will discuss some complexities in calculation of drawing power so the basic formula that you have must have remembered from our previous video the stock should not be more than 180 days old in general your debtors receivable amount from the customer should not be older than 90 days 120 days 150 days 180 days as the case may be and it should exclude the group concerns receivable amounts as well right the creditors you need to consider of full amount right so one thing that may come up in your career journey what is the paid stock some may someone may ask you what is the formula of paid stock what is paid stock so the stock the amount that you have invested in buying your goods or raw material or keeping the finished goods the support that is given by the creditors to you in buying those raw material if you deduct the investment from the support taken so the net amount of the stock remains is the stock for which you have actually paid for so the stock in which the total money is invested out of that money invested we can say that much money is invested or supported by the suppliers right and the balance amount is actually invested by you right so the balance amount stock minus creditors is called paid stock right so if you do uh, stock plus debtors minus creditors you come to gross drawing power or your gross investments right and you deduct 25 percent per motor margin of of that amount 25 percent then balance amount is your this re, this represents 75 percent of the amount this is your drawing power right so friends here we have asked for 25 percent per motor margin that promoter should contribute 25 percent but basis the risk factors of the case this promoter margin can be different some banks may ask for 50 percent per motor margin some banks may ask for 30 percent 35 percent 40 percent per motor margin right i haven't seen a case where the promoter margin of 20 percent or 15 percent in other words less than 25 percent is demanded 25 percent is the benchmark but higher margin can be there basis is the risk factor of the case and i have even seen the cases where the margin of 25% is asked on the paid stock and debtors on debtors 40% margin is asked. So that means the vari variation in margin basis the items can also be there. But the margin will be always same on stock and creditors because this represent paid stock and margin cannot be different in, in those these two items. The only difference can be in the debtors amount the higher margin can be demanded in case of debtors by the banks right so basic the risk factor of the case the margin can change right on increasing side i mean so paid stock paid stock always has common margin it cannot be different for stock or creditors right it will always be common and same debtors can have different margin that thing you need to understand so let us take an example suppose debtors has per motor margin of 40 percent bank is saying that on the investment amount of your debtors that amount you have invested in your debtors you need to contribute 40 percent as your margin and 60 percent will be given as debt by the bank as drawing power by the bank and stock and creditors you can take 25 percent benefit right so how the calculation of drawing power will take place in such a scenario so first we will pick up stock and creditors we will deduct creditors from the stock and this is our paid stock so 25 percent margin is there on the paid stock so you do 25 percent of this it comes to this you deduct 25 percent margin and this 75 percent of paid stock is your drawing power on paid stock and then comes the debtors you pick up the debtors as per the cycle allowed by the bank then out of that debtors you either do 40 percent and deduct uh, uh, deduct it from the total debtors amount or you do straight away 60 percent of the debtors right so this represents 60 percent amount of the debtors after deducting your 40 percent margin so this 60 percent plus this 75 percent this comes to your total drawing power so if margins are different then the formula will change a bit 
right now coming forward on further calculations so basically when we calculating drawing power we want to give the benefit to the customer on the amount that he has invested in his stock or in his customers right sometimes it may happen that we are saying that he has invested a x amount in receivables from the customer but there may be a case where he may have received advances from customers as well right we are saying that creditors have supported them there may be cases where he has he has given advances to his suppliers as well right so if there are advances from customer and advances to suppliers as well in your balance sheet then the calculation can further change how you can take stock up to 180 days advances to supplier that you amount that you have invested in your suppliers that is kind of your stock in transit only because you have given your advance to the suppliers they are pre pre preparing your material for dispatching it to you so this is kind of your stock in progress or stock in transit kept at the supplier premises right so these are your debtors up to the cycle allowed minus creditors full amount minus advance from the customers the advance money that you have taken it's all kind of also a support to you because they have given you advance now you can use that money to fund your stock debtors or credit uh, pay your creditors right so this is a support right so you deduct that support from here so this will come to your drawing power and you do 75% of it and you, you you your drawing power will work out now some of you will ask sir te, uh, tell us the case where the margin is different the margin is different on paid stock and margin is different on debtors then what do we do if there are advances to supplier and advances from customers the calculations is very simple you are taking debtors as amount receivable from the customer the advances from the customers represents the amount you are, that you have taken in advance from some of your customer so you adjust both of these items with each other and you calculate 60% of that amount you adjust both of them you calculate 60% of them advances to suppliers represents your kind of stock in transit or stock kept at the supplier premises so you add up that amount in your paid stock add up that amount in your paid stock and calculate 25% of that accordingly right so that i have written here so one more question sometime people ask sir the stock is allowed up to 180 days debtors are allowed suppose up to 90 days creditors full amount what is the aging of advances to supplier or advances from customers is there any norm about it how many days old advances to supplier can be taken how many days old advances from customer can be taken so this is the basic question that uh, many people ask here so friends when we come to advances to supplier when we come to advances of to supplier it is a kind of stock only it is kind of stock only so generally so generally you can say that advances to suppliers should be in line with the stock period it should be it should not be older than 180 days right for advances from customers they are kind of debtors only so this is very debatable some people say that advances from customer should be in line with the debtor cycle it should not be older than 90 days 120 days 180 days right and some people say that they should be treated in line with the creditors full amount of advance from customer should be deducted from the calculations i am in the favor of deducting of full amount of advances from customer because we prepare we do our calculations as a banker on conservative side only whatever approach is followed in your bank or organization you do uh, you do follow their approach only just just it it may be calculation difference or policy difference in some of the banks right so there is no hard and fast thumb rule rel related to the credit period of uh, allowance of advances from customer or advances to suppliers right so i hope you have understood a bit one more step ahead that we have discussed in complexities of drawing power calculation in the next video we will move a bit more forward about it stay tuned to this channel thank you very much